All-American and uh, NBA draft choice prospect, uh, Jared Butler, Sikkim 365 Radio. I, I, I know you probably are ready to move completely on from all the decisions and all that the NBA has made with you. Can you try to explain what it was like to get that call, or how did that how did that go about? Man, um, probably one of the most um, freeing, relieving, stress relieving, you know, weight off my shoulders um, um, type moments because you know it's it's been a lifelong dream. Like as you may know, to, to play in the NBA, and you know, obviously I played basketball just my whole life, so. Um, to be eight, to be good enough to be able to play in NBA, and then um, the the choice or the decision of me maybe not being able to make it is it's a it's a pretty um, heavy heavy decision. So it was definitely pretty freeing for me to finally get the yes. So uh, that's that's what it felt like. Was it a text? Was it a call? Was it Zoom? What was it? <laughs> it was a it was a call. Um, it was a call, and um, that's about it. And it was just kind of like dang is over you know no more you know the war is over type thing so yep. yeah that's... who was the first person you told <laughs> um my, my mom mm-hmm. my mom kept calling me if she if i um, she kept wondering if i heard anything she kept calling and then finally i called her back and said yep like you know it's over with and then my dad and because drew kept calling me too so <laughs> for sure you know, I've always wanted to ask you this, but I wanted to wait until it was the right time. When you left Alabama, there was a reason. And, of course, everything happens for a reason, and it's worked out to be perfect for you as far as what happened at Baylor or what you accomplished at Baylor. But were there times during your career when this was ever kind of a, a dark cloud that you kind of every once in a while would just pop up in your mind about whether or not you could ever play in the NBA? Not physically, not talent-wise, but was this something that was ever kind of just always there? Yeah, uh, without a doubt. Um, literally, like it, it, it didn't rule my life because there, you know, there were stints where you know throughout the season where I would just focus on the season. But there'd be times where I'd be like, you know, am I doing all this and you know end up not being able to you know go to the next level? Um, is it should I continue to keep doing this? Um, it, it just felt like a big question mark over my my life. And, um, you know, it obviously just increased my trust in the Lord and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, without a doubt. You know, Jared, Baylor's had players who have had some health things that have kind of derailed whatever their dreams were. Isaiah Austin's still playing. In fact, he's playing at a very high level. We know King McClure's now an analyst in, in covering college basketball, and there's been a couple of others as well. What does it say? about Baylor being able to handle these cases, yours as well, and have the right people to make sure that this is something you can do? Yeah, um, I, I think majority of people would say, oh, Baylor's just last day, last day of the call and um, irrational and, you know, just wants everybody to play type people. But that's the complete opposite. I think they're just, number one, open-minded as far as any, you know, serious conditions. Um, and I think also they do a great job of, of not sticking to the stigma and, you know, trying to find all the right research and data that says otherwise, you know what I mean? And um, I think that's just the difference between Baylor and a lot of schools. They they actually go a step further and, and want the players to play and don't look at it as a risk, but as an opportunity to, you know, for a kid with a dream and to get a degree and things like that. Like it's, it's more than just, oh, you know, one condition, like, that's it. You know, it's more of like, oh, this player is a person, and we want to do all that we can so they, that they can play. You know what I mean? Yep, so, yep. Uh, that's the difference. What Was the the NBA, was it more research-based? Was it conference calls? Was it testing, physical, stamina? What, 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 did, like, what was that process like? It was more trying to get the best, the experts in the field and um, – allow them to have a deliberation and um you know it's it's a lot of like like uh, i don't want to say politics but it's it's a lot of you know getting the right people on the right on the right side of the conversation and making sure okay if these are the experts in the field what are they saying um that was that was the majority of it so uh, you are obviously a first-round talent. You, you expect to be drafted, and people uh, are going to want to draft you. But So what have you been able to hear? Uh, have you worked out for any teams? Could you do that before the decision? And now are you just cramming to get in front of people? 
<laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, I couldn't work out um, with with anybody um, prior to the decision. And now, I mean, I think most teams were kind of um, um, just kind of shocked or kind of, you know, didn't expect for me to get cleared. I don't, I don't know. I, that's just kind of my my um, my my hunch. But um, I mean, like like you said, a lot of teams are definitely looking forward, and they like really value the the opinion that the the NBA has you know set forth with um, me being able to play. So I think teams are going to be very like just. Um, um, reliant on on the NBA's decision, so like I, I feel real good about it. If that makes sense. Now you uh, you've been still doing your thing. You just couldn't work out for specific teams. Right, uh, right, are you right. are you like if someone was to call and I don't know the process or the timeline of the schedule, but let's just say someone called you and say, hey, they fly you in or they come find you. Are you ready to go right in front of them right right now? Yeah, I am. Yeah, totally. And right. you know, I have a, I have a great I have a great agent mm-hmm. and. Um, it's very like you know it's a it's a mind game and it's a like strategic game of like who you go in front of and you know things like that but yeah you were at the espies huh yeah i was what was that like i, I know that it was kind of um it was different because of still some people only a certain amount of people but it was there what was that like to just be a part of that event it was phenomenal um just very honored number one to you know be representative of baylor but um, you know, it's it's different life. You know, it's you know celebrities. There's you know obviously athletes there, but there's like you know Matt from The Bachelor. There's Tracy Morgan. You know, um, you know anchors that are just real you know well known TikTok influencers. Just people you see and it's just like yeah, like um, I'm in a in a setting where all these people are together. Like it's 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 pretty cool. Um, but at the same time, you know, you get there and you have these big expectations of it being like, oh, this, you know, celebrity big moment. But I mean, at the end of the day, everybody's just people. Um, everybody's trying to look their best and all that. But it was a great, like I said, a great experience for me. And um, we didn't win, so it also like kind of tarnished my, my experience. Yeah, and if you had won, wouldn't you have loved to have had everybody with you too? Wouldn't that have made it for even sure. more special? Yeah, 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 without a doubt. And you know, like like you said, it was kind of different and. Um, I think if everybody got to go, the experience would have been just phenomenal, you know, regardless of what happened or whatever. You've made this clear from the very first time we ever spoke with you back when you arrived on campus about your faith and what it means to you. And obviously you had to lean on that a lot during the last few years and including in recent days. How much did you lean on that and, and where would you be without it? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. I mean, um, I'm not going to sit here and say, yep, I, I knew it from the jump that, you know, the lower is going to let me play. Um, you know, I have full confidence. I have full faith. There was days I never doubted. I'm not going to sit here and say that. There was days where it would it would just it would just wear on me, like mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You know, I, there were times where I thought God was just holding out on me. It was almost like God was playing with my, my life. I, I felt those emotions. And, um uh, and one thing I learned about just the Lord is that He's right there in those all these emotions that I'm feeling. Um, you know, He He hears all the 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 groaning that I have. You know, just for my life, and you know, it's like something completely out of my control. Um, so it was it was definitely a, a growth moment for me, and um, I think through it, through it, I'm like even more trusting in the Lord. Like you know, winning the national championship, He allowed me to do that. Like that was like a a big thing like there's no way he could not allow me to play in the NBA you know and it was just like oh it's a lot of mind games and you know um just just a lot and um but I, I through through another there, here's another instance where the Lord has been faithful to me even when I haven't been faithful to him um so like how, how could I ever worry about my next future steps ever again and you see what I'm saying like, yeah that, no I, I, where I'm I, at. I get it I mean that's 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 what it's about yeah. you did not know for sure that you would get the green light so you have the agent whose job is to make sure everything's taken care of and you're in front of the right people and all of that especially now that the draft is coming up in a couple of weeks um, how much or less than that how much did did you have to also discuss other options whether it's Europe or or somewhere else like a lot of Baylor players have done either if they've played in the NBA or they have it or they have and then they've eventually gone pro there to even earn more of a living was that something you had to start to research as well 
Yeah, um, overseas, and even going back to Baylor, that was like an option. But um, like I, I, I made sure not to sign any um, endorsement deals or anything like that to keep to keep my eligibility. And then it became a point to where I was like, okay, like I, I feel really good about it. But it didn't it didn't happen until like after the combine mm-hmm. um, to where I felt you know comfortable. But yeah, it's 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 kind of like you don't want to talk about it because we have Plan A and we think Plan A is going to work. But you know, being realistic and you know, um, yeah, we definitely had to discuss it. And it, it was just kind of those things like we didn't want to talk about it because it's like, you know, it's, it would have been a dark days if if I, if I had to go that route or go back to school sure. or something like that. You know. Well, I, I remember one of the times we had you on, and I had to do my job, and I asked you about, you know, is that in the back of your mind? And I know that that that's you probably got a little bit fed up with those type of questions or tired of it it's just something that needs to be asked but and you look back on it now i mean jared you you know i mean here we go you got cleared you're ready to go you're gonna have a chance to work out just enough huh yeah no it's it's, it's phenomenal like you know it's it's like yeah like it's just crazy because now i feel like okay legit basketball player whereas before i was just like just hesitant to where anybody was like, oh, I can't wait to see you in the league. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, me too. But yeah. now I'm like, so I'm like, yeah, like I am excited, you know. So it's, man, like I said, it's so freeing. And, um, you know, just can never question the Lord. Not because he allowed me to play, but because, like, I don't know. It's just it's just more to that, you know. But, mm-hmm. but yeah. Did you ever not believe uh, I think there were days where I questioned, but I, I did, but like, I, I definitely knew I was going to play in the NBA. Um, but I didn't, there were days where I were like, just very unsure where it was like blurry, but I, like, in, I could, I could, I could always feel that I was going to play. Yeah. So now you're going to play, you're going to get drafted. <laughs> Someone's going to take you, you're going to sign a contract. And then next thing you know, I mean, the season's just around the corner. They're game yeah. six tonight, right? Milwaukee and Phoenix. When you watch the finals, you dream about that moment, not just now in the NBA, but one day being able to have that opportunity. Oh, oh yeah. You know, winning that's the championship. I want to experience that in the NBA. Like how, how was that winning a you know NBA Finals like that's you know times this national champion 2.0 like it's on another level and um, you know you got to be even 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 more just on top of your game and you know at another level you know playing with the best players in the world so it's like it's another challenge that I'm just ready ready to face and you know I'm just extremely confident that you know I'll be there one day for sure. NBA uh, coming up, uh, you won the national title, Big 12, Athlete of the Year, student, spokesperson, all that stuff, you got that. Um, uh, have you had a chance to visit much with uh, with uh, Davion or Maceo or Vital or anyone else uh, as, as they try to prepare for their next step? Yeah, um, everybody's just extremely busy, but, you know, Davion, he's, you know, um, and in LA working out and um, we call like probably like once a week about just you know whatever's going on um Maceo is kind of the same thing Mark Mark is doing his thing um you know trying to you know just just make it and it's it's definitely a different experience because you're you're your own um company now it's not like a team oriented thing like you're you're marketing your own self so it's 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 definitely just everybody's just you know trying to become the best brand that they can be so it's it's been it's been nice to close it out with this nba draft night and someone calls whatever team and they call your name and you probably would have known by now because they probably called you and your agent but when you hear the name so and so selects baylor guard jared butler can you even imagine that yeah, I can imagine it. Uh, I've been imagining it forever. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I, I I don't even know the type of emotions I'm gonna have. Um, I don't know if I if if I'm gonna be Mr. Tough Guy in a moment, but cry later when I go to sleep at night. Like I don't know. Um, but there's definitely gonna be a rush of emotions that you know just can't even explain. So um, it's been a long journey, and um, just. Just so thankful, you know what I mean? So thankful. And Baylor Nation is thankful you were a part of them and always will be. Hey, uh, enjoy the moment, man. Smell the roses. And, and thanks for everything you've always been. And whenever and whoever drafts you, we'll be in touch with them so we can get you on with every team you're going to be with, okay? 
Yeah, sounds good. No, I appreciate you. You've done a great job, for sure. You too, Jared. Jared Butler, Baylor All-American, <laughs> NBA draft prospect on Sikkim 365 Radio.